All right, folks, how are we doing? It's Shabash, it's Ornit again. Today, we've got a user interface guide as part of our beginner series. So let's light a fire under this and get started. We've made a new character, so this screen should be fairly familiar to you, even if you're a new player. And immediately we've got the world map view. So let's go from the top, what can we see? Orna Legends Village and the Earthen Empire right at the top of the screen. This is information regarding the area you're currently situated in. The name of the area is Orna Legends Village, which is obviously be renamed by myself. And the Earthen Empire is the kingdom of the person currently in control of that area. Moving on to the top right, you can see a small rotten slime. Now this area is reserved for world buffs. Things like torches, lucky coins, experience potions and shrines, they'll appear here. These are generally all temporary buffs. Going down to the bottom of the screen, we've got our five main menu buttons. Now from left to right, we've got the kingdom menu, the quest menu, the main character menu, the quick potions menu and the area menu. We'll come onto these each individually in more detail. And the bottom right, we've got a filter option, which is the map filters. And if we do this, you can see a few options for what you can see in the world map. For example, we can see player, monsters, bosses, buildings, etc, etc. You can also show items. So we tap that on and now we can see we've got some shrines available in the area. So let's turn items off for the moment. We'll leave everything else on. We'll show NPCs as well in case we can see someone from here. Ah, uh, there's Carl. Now you can see me moving the map. Let's talk quickly about controlling the map. Basically, I've got single touch mode on at the moment. So swipe left left and right to rotate the screen, swipe up and down to tilt, and then you're going to pinch to zoom in and out. This is great for when you're on the move traveling, you can spot bosses, buildings, NPCs, uh, really gives you great options. The little arrow at the top, that reset, if you tap that, which is not working for me, but if you tap that or you can double tap, that resets your map. There's an option for going to double touch mode. It's basically the same as single touch, except you need to have a second finger or thumb on the screen at the same time. All right, let's go into each of these main menus individually. Yeah, if we start from the left, bottom left, we can go into the kingdom menu. Now, this is a new character and you need to be level 25 before you can join the kingdom. So not much we can see here. Instead, let's hop over to another account where we can join a kingdom and see what it really looks like in here. Once you've joined a kingdom, you're going to be doing raiding. You're going to be doing kingdom gauntlets from here. You can see I've got a, I've got a mob to kill in the kingdom gauntlet. We'll do that later. War, you, can, you will check your war. You can check the roster, uh, the status of the kingdom. You can also accept kingdom quests from this screen. And you can leave the kingdom from here as well if you like. Checking the raids, you can see uh, what raids are currently active and you can join raids from this screen here. Don't worry too much about this kingdom menu until you've obviously joined a kingdom. While we're on this account, you can see in the top right all of the world buffs which I've activated. Okay, swapping back to the newer account, let's go to the next menu which is the quest menu. This is super important, especially when you've just started the game. We've got tabs up at the top. The tabs basically split your, your quest into the main storyline daily quests and in quests accepted from inns and NPC quests. So let's have a look at the story quest. When you first join the game, there is a prompt which Odie has added telling you to tap on the quest menu as the first thing you do. Do that, make sure you accept the story quest line because the quest line is super important. You get really good items towards the end of the game. Even throughout the early game as well, you get lots of useful things, horns, experience, etc. But you need to manually accept the quest to start off with and manually complete the quest as well. Let's have a look at what daily quests are available. Daily quests are split by tiers. So as you go up levels and go into new tiers, you'll have new quests available for you to complete. These all accept and complete automatically, so you don't need to worry too much about it. And these quests are the same for everybody, actually. All daily quests are the same for every character, for every player playing the game. Moving on to jobs. These are quests which you accept from inns out in the wild. Similarly, NPC quests which you can find from NPCs out in the wild and actually let's have a look if we can accept Carl's quest over here. Is Carl level one? Yes he is. Let's have a talk with him. Let's accept these quests. We need to find some iron and defeat some bandits before we can reap Carl's goods. You can see they've got a question mark above his head. That means you've got a quest available for you. Having a look, we can see these other NPCs. This guy is tier 6. We have to be tier 6 before we can accept this guy's quest. So we'll come back to him. Alright, so that's quests done. 
I'm going to leave the main character menu to the end. Let's move on to the quick potions menu. From here, you can quickly use any potions out in the out in the world. You can use your lucky coins, experience potions, etc. from here as well. Let's fire up a torch. We can see the auto button here. This is basically the auto heal function. You hold that down for a second and that will automatically take you to maximum health and mana using your smallest potions available. Really important tip. You don't need to be in this screen to use the auto heal function. What you can do is long tap the potions menu at the bottom and that actually uses the auto heal function straight away so that'll save you a tap next one we've got on the far right is the area menu so as you're traveling around you'll be checking into the area to see what's available and immediately what do we see the name of the area we can cycle through using the arrows and these will show local areas that we can see nearby but you won't be able to interact with any area unless you're within 250 meters of the area let's quickly go through this this main area screen we can see the income now this relates to whether you've conquered the guardian or if you've taken control of the area and then checking out the influence now this is related to the person currently in control of the area and it dictates how strong the player in control of the area will be to defeat Influence is factored by the surrounding areas nearby. Now, Duke influence means if the same person's got lots of areas nearby, they're going to have increased influence, they're going to be stronger. Same goes if it's the same kingdom around and if they're the same faction. Make Origin Town, super important. You want to make Origin Town in the area where you're going to play the most. If that's at home, like I guess a lot of people at the moment during COVID-19, let's do it on this character. Change Origin Town, yes. Now, the Origin Town bonus gives you a 10% multiplier to all your stats really really good you have to be situated in your origin town to get the bonus let's move on to the exploration tab at the top now every area has a guardian and it can be a random mob or a boss as well and if you kill a guardian you get double the rewards as a as you would normally this also stacks with experience shrines horn buffs etc etc but the difference with guardians is that you'll likely have some detrimental battle conditions affecting your character before you go into battle well as you battle, making the fight slightly more difficult. These are a great source of experience and orns as you're traveling out and about, especially when you level up and you can kill more powerful enemies. Okay, moving on. All right, the control tab basically shows you who is in control of the area. This is the main PVP augmented reality function in the Orna. It's one of the reasons I love this game. Visiting new areas, trying to take control of new areas. Actually, we've taken control of this area now. We haven't really, but because we've set the origin town to ourselves, we're going to look as if we are in control of the area. In fact, we're not. It's actually my other account, but we'll come on to that in another video. This is the screen where you'll be fighting for control of your areas. All right, let's move on to the next tab where we can build buildings. Now the keep, you can only build in your origin town, but if you change origin towns, your keep will follow you. This is a one-time build, and obviously you have to be level 50, so it's not an immediate wor worry for us, for new players. Cycling through, you can see the buildings we have available to us. Also decorations, which you can purchase with decor tokens, purchasable from the rune shop. You can jazz up your hometown. And then the final screen nearby, you can actually see what mobs have, have spawned nearby. This can be useful if you're tracking down mobs for a quest, be it daily or your main story quest bosses also al always appear here even if you are not high enough level to see them for example there's a tier 9 boss here which we're too low to see okay for the vast majority of the game you can only see mobs at your current tier and you can also see bosses one tier above you that works all the way up until tier 9 all right let's check out the main character menu now so we've got our name at the top we can see our gold and our orange then we've got three icons in the top right of the screen let's go through each of these Clicking on the trophy, this takes us to our achievements menu. Now, achievements are super important early on during the game. You can see they all give orns, which are generally quite hard to come by at the start of the game. So there's plenty of fairly easily achievable achievements, which you'll want to achieve during the early game to gain orns. Okay. The next one is the World Hub. So in the World Hub, you can currently see what active events are going on. You can invite players. Uh, you can see what's nearby. Nobody really knows what the geographical limitations are on what's nearby. And there's some licensing info at the bottom. Also the social networks as well. Okay, let's look at the influence tab as well. So any areas that you're in control of will appear here. And this is more like an information screen. You can't really interact with it in any way. And then leaderboards. Three leaderboards you'll see for players and one for kingdoms. Okay, so you can check out the global leaderboard 
leaderboard, the competitive leaderboard, the regional leaderboard. What this does is filters out the global leaderboard into a 10 by 10 degree lat long grid based on your origin town location. Making it onto your regional leaderboard for the first time is super motivating in this game. All the leaderboards only show the top 100 ranked players and kingdoms. And there's currently no other way to check beyond that apart from looking at individual player profiles. Okay, so just beneath the top bar is what I like to call the buff bar. All the temporary buffs which we saw earlier will appear here, but we can also see our character buffs and passive abilities that affect us during the game. The only one we can see right now is the weapon proficiency buff, which gives a 5% bonus to offensive stats. If we hop back to a slightly higher account, you'll see there's plenty more buffs affecting us in this screen. And you can sap on the individual icons to see what it is and what they do. All right, so we can actually see our experience bar encircling our character sprite in the middle of the screen there. I actually missed this in the world view. If we go back, the thin line along the bottom of the screen is actually your experience bar as well. Okay, let's go clockwise through the other menus in the screen. Starting off with status, you'll see your class and spec, level, etc. here. You will also see your current experience points in true numbers. And then you've got your main stats in this screen as well. The stats in this screen are dictated by your world gear loadout, which we'll see come to in a second. Checking our record, this is basically your profile, and you can see our global rank, how many mobs we've defeated, bosses defeated, players defeated, etc. etc. If we swap out to the main account, once you've played for a little while, and once you buy a pet for the first time, you'll also have this follower tab available for you to check the stats of your pet as well. Back to our thief. That's the status screen. All right, let's check out the equipment menu. This is the screen where you'll be equipping all your brand new items from. So how do you change equipment? You just tap on the equipment slot and that will take you to all the available items that you can equip. We've only got a dagger. We haven't killed anything on this character. Likewise, the grayed out slots, we can't put anything in there because we don't have any equipment. So obviously, as you find more and more items, you'll be able to swap them in from here. And then we've got three tabs at the top of the screen, Gauntlet, PvP and Raids. If we check out the Gauntlet, if you hit the checkbox at the top, it means your character will use this specific loadout when doing Gauntlets and Dungeons. Similarly, if you're fighting in the arena or doing PvP in areas or in a war fight, you'll use this. Please don't check this box if you haven't got any equipment in the slots. You'll need to actually equip items, otherwise you won't be wearing anything. Okay, inventory. Any items we do find will appear in our inventory. Cycling through the item categories on the left, we can easily filter what we want to find. And on the bottom right is also the filter option. You can search by a specific name. You can also sort by a few different things. Filter by tier and uh, quality as well. All right, so let's go through the gameplay options. There's a few obvious ones, but I'll just point out the ones that I like to have on. Monster levels and area grid lines. Here is where you can swap between single and double touch for the map control. The left-handed mode is also available, which swaps things around. Other options, basically do what they say, we'll put these on. Auto dismantle, we can talk a little bit more about. Any equipable gear piece can drop from broken all the way up to ornate quality, and these qualities affect the item's base stat. Now, when you're starting out, I don't recommend having this on because you're gonna be finding gear upgrades very regularly. Further on in the game, you can change this around. So let's turn that off. All right, moving on to the graphics tab, you can select depending on your hardware. We can then reduce or subsequently increase eye strain. Let's turn that off. Disabling animations apart from doing what it says on the tin will actually also increase the speed of your fights. And I like to keep weather animations on. Moving on to the notifications tab, the main thing player notifications do is tell you when gear has finished upgrading in the blacksmith. Once you've joined a kingdom, I'd recommend firing all of these notifications on. It means you won't forget to do your war fights or gauntlet fights, and it might save your ass from getting kicked from certain kingdoms. Okay, and then finally the character tab, we can see some privacy options. So if you click location privacy, nobody will see your character name in the world. You can hide other players' buildings. You can return to the title screen, connect to Google Play Games, or delete your character if you want. All right, let's check out the rune shop now here's the only place you can spend real money in the game but that does not mean it's pay to win all the items in this tab are fairly easy to find if you actually play the game that is excluding decor tokens which you can use in the area building screen we saw earlier next tab is appearance this is brilliant you can use any purchase sprite pack with any class in the game special classes Every class you unlock will have a sprite pack available for you to purchase. You can also purchase special classes. Now these aren't more powerful versions of the base class at all. You're essentially buying these for the sprite, which you can also use with any class. And finally, if you want to buy Odie some coffee, you can do so from here.
Once we reach level 10, we can enter the arena and fight other opponents. Each fight costs one arena token. Arena tokens drop from bosses, from mimics, and you can also find them in world shops and also shops you build yourself. These are really easy to accumulate through the game. Your menu gauntlet you can enter once you've reached level 50 and found some gauntlet keys. Again, gauntlet keys are fairly easy to accumulate. They drop from certain bosses. The key cost to enter your gauntlet changes depending on what mode you select. Dungeons you find in the world work the exact same way as your menu gauntlet, except they have their own separate cooldown. And you don't share dungeon cooldowns with other players, only yourself. Alright, next option, party time. You do need to be basically right next to another character in the real world before you can invite them to your party. Okay, let's check out skills, which work in a very similar fashion to the equipment. Once you've leveled up and learned a few skills, you just tap on the slot and you'll be able to equip a skill. Leveling up and unlocking new classes allows you to learn new skills. Any skill that you learn from a certain class is actually equipable across every single other class. Cycling through the gauntlet PvP and raid tabs at the top again work in the same way as equipment. So don't forget to equip spells, especially if you're a mage. And then finally, let's check out the character menu. It's from here where we can unlock and swap between classes, specializations, customizable sprites, and you can even change your character name as well. You can switch between unlocked classes at any time for free. Specializations, however, do cost orns every time. Each class has some flavor text, but don't read too much into it. The main playstyle is dictated by your skills and abilities. Tap the arrows to cycle between classes. You can unlock every class in the game as long as you have the orns to do so. And as we just mentioned, any skill you learn from unlocking a class is usable by any other class in the game. Aye, so cycling through the classes will tell you any prerequisites you need before being able to unlock them. You can check out the skills you'll be able to learn from unlocking that class and the passive abilities those classes may have while playing as that class. Specializations or your spec is basically your subclass. You'll be able to pay orange to spec into these subclasses once you reach the required tiers. New specs become available at tiers 3, 5, 7 and 9. The important thing to remember though is it does cost orange every time you want to swap between specs. Now your first spec is free, so one tip I like to suggest to new players is wait until you're tier 5, wait until you're level 100 and go in and unlock the berserker spec first up. Okay, the customize tab. Here you can change your title, your sprite once you've unlocked some and your gender if you so choose. And you can change your character name from the information screen here. Alright, I know that was a bit of a slog and not very exciting, but I hope I managed to help a few players and explain some new things for them. We've got heaps of beginner series content coming up, so stay tuned, subscribe if you feel like it, give us a thumbs up if you like this video, give us a thumbs down if you didn't. I'm Shabash, cheers for watching, see you in the next one. Ciao!